Hello everyone, in this lesson we are going to look at control flow in Java. Basically we will look at if, if else, else if and switch statements. So stick around and don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now the structure of if statement is something like this. We have the if keyword and also in front of that inside the parentheses we have the condition and whether this condition is true now these statements is going to be executed. Very easy and simple and if you look deeply it's almost English. And now if this condition is not true, I mean if this condition is false, this block of code is not going to be executed. It comes to the else part and execute all of the codes or statements which are written here. And that's why it is called control flow. We get the control of the program flow first. We check if this condition is true then these statements is going to be executed and these statements will be ignored. But if this condition is false so these statements will be ignored and these statements is going to be executed. To have a better understanding let's see an example of this also. So I'm gonna clean up the screen now. Here I wanna create a variable of type boolean. By name of simply we can say agree and put that to true. Now I'm creating my condition. So if agree, it means if the condition is true, then this statement is going to be printed. For example, we can say let's do it. In case you are not agree, so we'll say do you have any other plan? Now what this program does, it look at the agreement whether it's true or false. If it's true, so it will say let's do it. If it's not true, it means if the agree is false. Basically you can say in case of not agree, this code will be executed and will print out that do you have any other plan? Let's run this. And as we predict it, we'll have let's do it because we have assigned true here in the agree variable. So while interpreting the Java interpreter comes here and look at this that the value of this agree is true. Now this statement is executed and this statement is being ignored by Java interpreter. Now if I change this value to the false, if I run it again, we'll get the second statement executed. So do you have any other plan? The thing you have to keep in mind that we can have if statement without this else also. So I'm going to comment all of these and while executing this program Java interpreter comes here and check out this condition whether it's true or not. If it's true then this block of code will be executed. If not it will jump over this and execute the next part of the program. So I'm going to bring that back. We can use comparison operators also here in this condition. For that I'm gonna create a new variable of type int by the name of x equal to 5. Now we say here if x is greater than 4 then what it have to do it have to add 4 to the value of 5. Simple we can say x plus 4 and what if this condition is not true what it will do it have to subtract 1 from the value of x like this. Here you can see I use a comparison operator of greater than. Let's check out how it works. We got the 9 in the output because the value of x is greater than 4 and this condition is true. So this line or this statement is executed. But what if I change this value to for example 8. Now if I run the program we will get 4 at the output because the value of x is 5 and 5 is not greater than 8. So this condition becomes false this statement is ignored and this statement is executed. We use this structure when we have two choices if the first one is true then execute that if not execute this. But we can have multi choices also for example I say if the x is greater than 8 then execute this statement and if the x is greater than 4 execute this statement else execute this one. For that we have to add here simply an else if and here again the condition x is greater than 4 what it have to do it have to subtract just one that we have before and in the last case if none of the above condition are true it have to for example add some value to the x. I say here x plus 2 for example. Now let's run it again. You can see the value of x is 5 and now it checks the first condition if x is bigger than 8 or not. So this is false. This condition is skipped. It comes to the second condition. It checks whether x is bigger than 4. Yeah this is true. x is bigger than 4 and this statement is executed. And the last statement is also ignored. 
Now, if I change the value of x to, uh, for example, 2, now the first condition is also false and the second is also false, then it comes to the final one. And there is no checks because the above conditions are false, here this statement is executed like so but it does so the value of x was 2 and this statement add 2 to the value of x now 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and we got the right result that we want and the most important thing we can use else for as much conditions as we have now this structure is not that much hard but it wants a little bit practice so you have to work on it to have a better understanding of all of these lines of code now the second control flow structure that i want to talk about is switch the structure of the switch statement is something like this here we have the switch keyword and also in the parenthesis in front of that we locate here the variable not the condition we cannot add any condition here in the switch statement and in the switch statements we have different cases for this variable if the case or if this variable is like this then do this thing and then break the program what does it mean if this case is true then this statement is going to be executed to avoid the execution of the down lines of codes we have to break the program and this break keyword will stop executing the rest statements of the switch statement and will be exit out of the switch statement but if this case is not true then it will check the second case if this case is true then this thing will be done and again the break concept is the same and finally when all of the cases are false the default value which is this one this will be executed since there is nothing down there we don't have the break keyword here but if we have multi lines of statements here in the default we have to add one break here also to give you a clear understanding let's see this also in example here in this example, I want to create a simple calculator which will done the four basic arithmetic operations. And for that, I need two variables here, num1 and num2. And I have to initialize the variables here. For initializing, I just want to add the value, for example, 4 and here 3. Another variable of type car and I'll name this variable by operation. And here we have to select an operation to be executed. For example, I add first the sum. I want to print out the sum of these two. Now let's see different cases for this operation in the switch statement. Like switch operation. And as I said, we are not writing any conditions. Here we just add the name of a variable for which we will see the different cases. Whether this case is true, this will happen. Whether that case is true, that will happen. Now let's see some cases for this operation here. First we say if case plus, then what it have to do? It have to simply print out the sum of those two numbers, num1 and num2. And here we have to add the break keyword. Now let's look for the second case. If the case is subtraction, now what it have to do, it have to subtract these two numbers, num2, and like before the break keyword here. Now for case 3, if it's multiplication, so now it have to multiply these two numbers. Again break here, and if the case is division, it have to divide num1 on num2 and break and at the end if none of the above cases are true then what it have to do the default output would be for example you have entered invalid operation now let's see the program once more here we defined two variables by the name of num1 and num2 of the type int and we initialize that with the value of 4 and 3 and down here we create a variable by the name of operation of the type car and here we assign the plus basically at the beginning. Now we switch through this operation and we look at the different cases for this operation whether if the operation variable is equal to plus then it have to print out the sum of those two numbers. If the case is subtraction then it have to subtract two numbers. If the case is multiply then it have to multiply and if the case if none of these cases are true then this statement is going to be executed. Let's run it now. There you go, we have 7 in the output, so the sum of 4 and 3 is 
7 because the case was plus here. So if I change this to minus, now we'll get the result 1 here. There you go. Because the first case is not true, then it is ignored. And since the second case is uh, true, this statement is executed. And after that, this break gets us out of the switch block. Now if I remove this one from here or if I just comment here this break statement, now we'll see what will happen. We'll get the multiplication also because this statement is true, this will execute it and we haven't say the program, the interpreter to get out of this switch statement because one is executed. Then it uh, think this is also belong to that and this case is executed also. After this case, it looks at the break and then the Java interpreter break the block of switch. Hope you got the point and the importance of break keyword. Now if I add a character an invalid operation, for example, I want to see the modulus. If I run this, since we don't have any case for the modulus, it says you have entered invalid operation. This also needs some effort and practice. You have to work on all of these and uh, hope you enjoy and learn something. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell icon. Share the video to your friends. See you in the next lesson.